Hi everyone, I'm Jenny Hutchinson from the Hyde Collection and today I'm presenting the answer to this week's Guess the Silhouette. For this week's Guess the Silhouette, we're exploring the dining room of Hyde House and here's the shape of the silhouette that was provided on social media this morning. This piece has always caught my eye, yet I would often pass by it and uh, in particular on our tours, focus on some of the other kind of more highlights of the dining room. So that would include Portrait of Mary by Abbott Henderson Thayer, Paolo and Daphne by Hans Bull, and even the button under Mrs. Hyde's chair would make it into my spiel as well. It's important to note, along with these ideas that I just presented, that while 40 minutes seems like a long time to be on one of our tours, for us guiding a tour, do due to the amount of variety and objects in a room, we often have to leave out or edit out inf interesting information in order to keep to that 40 minute timeline. That's where programs like this become really important and integral to our operations at the Hyde Collection because it provides us with an opportunity to talk about other pieces in the collection that are perhaps not the focal point of a room uh, or they might have limited research available, uh, and, but that doesn't make them any less interesting to talk about. In any case, here's one of the objects that I often walk by that I'm pleased to talk more about today. Here we find a piece of Jasper Ware pottery by Josiah Wedgwood and John Flaxman, and it features a portrait of Carl von Linnaeus. You might be wondering how two makers are attributed to the creation of an object. In mediums such as ceramics, sculpture, or printmaking, it is common for part of an artistic process to call for multiple experts. In a painting workshop, you may have an apprentice complete parts of your painting. But the idea here is that the, apprent that the apprentice is seeking to become their own master. In a ceramic workshop, for example, a process may call for multiple masters. And in this case, this object needed someone who specialized in ceramic production, someone who specializes in modeling, and someone in mold making. Now, like the painting workshop, there would have been apprentices who would have learned these processes until they become experts. John Flaxman is said to be the artist that sculpted the form of our portrait of Carl von Linnaeus. However, there is record at the Wedgwood Museum to suggest he was the mold maker and rather C.F. Inlander as perhaps the author of the original portrait itself, and this dates to 1773. It is important to note here that art historians are often interpreting records that are quite old, such as this, and that this object was made for commercial purposes. So information found on this object would be brief, and in this case comes from a record such as a payment receipt. A commercial product does not diminish the expertise or innovation that was required to reproduce something in many. And as Wedgwood would perfect, the, the many was also reproduced in many different forms and mediums. In contemporary times, we tend to accurately attribute mass production to machi machinery. And there are cases where this still might be involved. However, we're referencing a time period where mass production is in its infancy. The other point to consider in terms of assessing value to something reproduced or with another innovator's handiwork or multiple innovators handiwork is when we consider an iconic painting, we have to consider that the artist's apprentice that I mentioned earlier is also involved in many of our iconic artworks. Uh, they may have produced different parts of the painting, whereas some of the more special or like highlighted parts of the artwork would have been created by their master. That would have included either the face or the hands. Uh, but we don't really cover up those parts that the apprentice worked on uh, in a painting, uh, yet we regard the artwork as just as important. Uh, and we also give kind of credit to the master there. Uh, so we, it's important to kind of keep some of that kind of in mind as we're thinking about uh, objects where there might be multiple makers or other different processes involved. Uh, expertise and innovation are still all required to keep the to retain uh, the high degree of standard in all various parts of the process. Additionally, when we consider the act of reproduction and assessing value, if we were to consider the process of printmaking where we have multiples of a different type of print, then if we consider famous artists such as Albert Dorr, 
uh, we don't regard as multiples of his prints as being any less value than uh, than the pr plate that his work was created on. Sure, there's uh, points within the printing process in which one print may be considered more valuable than the other. But any one of us, if we were to come across an Albert Dorr uh, original uh, or print by Albert Dorr, we would certainly want it. Uh, so uh, we have to keep that in mind as we're thinking about multiples and reproduction as well. In any case, John Flaxman is an interesting person to, to note because he would become England's most important sculptor of the period. And this work was produced within the first year of his employment with Wedgwood. Employment at such a place as Wedgwood provides makers with a foothold to build a resume, sort of like the apprentice in the painter in the painting master's workshop. So it can be a win-win situation. The artist becomes more accomplished and seasoned through their assignments, and the company can be credited for involving such innovative creatives at their companies. Now let's talk about Josiah Wedgwood. Josiah Wedgwood founded the Wedgwood Pottery Company, and, and you could kind of think of it as the Williams and Sonoma brand equivalent of the 18th century England. Wedgwood was most successful with producing earthenware and stoneware, and that was deemed an acceptable equivalent to porcelain. The look of Wedgwood pottery is unmistakably distinguishable, and this lent well to naturally marketing itself to capture the eyes and hearts of a consumer. Wedgwood pottery is best known for its unglazed, meaning uncoated, jasperware. Jasperware is a type of stoneware, which is the name for a type of clay body that designates that is fired or baked at a very high temperature. Jasperware is created to look like ancient Roman cameo glass. So basically, that means stylistically, it has a single color background and then it has like a raised relief carving that's in white and that portrays um, some realistic imagery. Wedgwood in particular is known for its Wedgwood blue background color. Additionally, this style of pottery is also known for its imagery depicting ancient mythology and reviving classical themes, uh, also equating to kind of this classical antiquity. Josiah is known for implementing innovative practices that support the greater methods of industrializing pottery production. This includes um, adopting an early form of transfer printing, which gave the effects of hand painting, but at a much cheaper cost. He also invested in practices in the division of labor to foster developing different lines of pottery that could be sold to all members of society. I was also really interested to learn that Josiah is credited with developing many of the methods of marketing, modern marketing, that were very familiar, such as mail order, money back guarantee, traveling salesmen, self-service, free delivery, buy one, get one, and catalog ordering. Who knew all these things that are normally just kind of part of our world all began with Josiah Wedgwood and his inspiration to place pottery in the hands of many with consideration to the needs of a, cons of a customer or consumer. Josiah Wedgwood was also ahead of his time in that he was an active abolitionist. In support of this cause, he Wedgwood Pottery creates a cameo medallion that depicted the seal for the society of affecting the abolition of the slave trade. This medallion was wildly, widely distributed and inspired the imagery from the medallion to be reproduced in other forms in support of the cause, including large banner size reproductions of the image. Before I talk more about the portrait of this medallion, the other interesting point to mention about Josiah is that he's also the grandfather of the famous naturalist Charles Darwin, which provides a nice pivot to another famed scientist featured in particular in this artwork, Carl von Linnaeus, and he's known as the father of modern taxonomy. Carl von Linnaeus was a Swedish botanist, zoologist, and physician that developed our modern system of how we name, rank, and classify organisms. In his published work, The System of Nature, which was published in 1735, he identifies three kingdoms of nature, stones or minerals, plants, and animals. It began as a 12-page work, however, with the quick support in the form of funding and resources to further develop the study, by 1758, it had reached its 10th edition, and by that point, he had then classified 4,400 species of animals and 7,700 species of plants. He continued to publish multiple volumes of work that expanded upon our knowledge of these three kingdoms. 
He is also the author of our binomial naming system, which is a two-part naming system device to classify a species. So for example, our species named Homo sapien was coined by von Linnaeus. Pictured here along with von Linnaeus is the Linnaea borealis plant, which was named after von Linnaeus. And along with the plant's genus Lin Linnaea, as it was his favorite type of plant. To complete this discussion, I would last like to refer to the shape of our artwork, which bears a likeness and is modeled after a Roman medallion. In both types of medallions, we have a minimal background with a lifted sculptural portrait known as relief in sculptural terms. Both were utilized not as currency, but as commemorative gifts, and they had sentimental value as they were given to a person uh, to acknowledge their accomplishments or admiration for their behavior or actions. With a Wedgwood medallion, the imagery is typically of respectable figures that were deemed to have influence of the age. The Wedgwood medallions were both collectibles and a form of admiration of acknowledgement of someone's great contributions to mankind. Thus, we have our portrait of Carl von Linnaeus. Thank you for joining me for this week's Guess the Silhouette. I'll be back next week with a new image and uh, silhouette for us to talk about. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and we'll see you soon. Bye.